In this video, we're going to look at conditional probability. And conditional probability is the probability of one event um, under the condition that another event is known. And so here's how to read this. Actually, I think I have it on the next slide. Okay, so, so this form is complicated, but here's what it means. The probability of B given A, okay, so it's the probability of B given that of A, a is already happened. That's the conditional part. It's on the condition that A has already occurred. Is equal to the probability of A and B happening divided by the probability of A happening. So know, know these notations. I'm, I'm not going to be super picky about the notations, but I want you to see them and recognize them. So I'll reread this. The probability of B given A is equal to the probability of A and B happening divided by the probability of A. Now listen, this formula might not seem super intuitive to you at this point, but as we work through some examples, I think it will, will, will start making sense, okay? Now, this chart shows the number of upperclassmen that choose to park in each of the lots. You can see we have juniors and seniors in total, and who parks in the reserved lot, the open lot, and total. So what's the probability of picking a junior given, here's our conditional part, that the student parked in the reserve lot, okay? So the first thing that we got to do is we got to define our events. What is event A and what is event B? So let's define event B as choosing a junior because we're, we're, that event is happening dependent on or, or given that the student parks in the reserve lot, okay? And so based on that, let, let's use our formula. I'm going to kind of write down our formula we said. We said the probability of B given A is equal to the probability of A and B over the probability of A. Now what might be more helpful for some of us is to rewrite A's and B's in terms of juniors and lots. So what's the probability that a student parks in the reserved lot and is a junior divided by the probability that they park in the reserved lot. Now, first off, let's find the probability that they um, are reserved and a junior. So we said there are 75 students that are uh, juniors parking in the reserved lot. So if I treat this like its own problem, that means that 75 out of 650 are juniors in the reserve lot. That's, that's the numerator of our formula here. So 75 out of 650 are juniors in the reserve lot. And let's divide that by the probability of people in the reserved lot. So if you look, there are 200 students in the reserved lot out of 650 total. And you kind of have this complicated fraction, but don't let that throw you off. Basically, whenever you're dividing fractions, you can flip the second and multiply. And this is going to be great in how this works. If I flip the second and multiply, the 650s cancel, and it leaves you with 75 over 200, which is equal to 37.5%. So... Basically, what that formula does is, is it gives you what you could have maybe, if you, if you got a good grasp of it intuitively, you could have maybe jumped straight to here from the table. Because what's the probability of picking a junior given that the student parked in the reserve lot? Well, that would mean there's 75 juniors out of 200. So you may have been able to see that directly from the table, but I would encourage you to learn how to use this formula and how it works because as the problems get bigger and more complicated, it might be a little bit harder to just see it intuitively from the table. Let's do more for practice. Okay. Now, we got another example, which is really more of the same. So I would say, try this on your own. Maybe, oh, oh okay, we got kind of the same problem, but now look, we, we, we've changed it around a little bit. We're saying, what is the probability of picking a student that parked in the reserve lot given that the student's a junior? Now notice the, if I put them side by side, you would notice the difference between the previous question and this one, but now we have a different given part. Now we're saying given that the student's a junior. This is our event A now. That's our condition, okay? So we're going to define our events differently by just a little bit. We're not going to say event B is choosing a student from the reserve lot. And event A is that the student's a junior. So now the probability of B given A, well, our formula is going to stay the same of A and B over the probability of A. But let's just um, kind of, I'm still going to fill it in with 
uh, the, the junior and the reserved wording here. So what this now means, notice the difference between this problem and last problem are very subtle. So now we're saying that probably the student's junior and reserved, so our numerator is actually going to be the same as the last problem, but we have um, a different condition given that the probability that they're a junior. So our numerator, the probability that they're junior and reserved, well, that would be 75 successes out of 650 total outcomes. But we're going to divide that by the probability that there's a junior. Well, the number of successes there is 250, and the total number of outcomes is 650. So the probability of their junior is 250 out of 650. We basically have, um, you know, kind of a fraction within a fraction sort of thing. So then, whenever I'm, whenever I'm doing that, the math on it, I do 75 over two or over, excuse me, 650, and then I flip the second and multiply. And what's going to happen a lot of these times is these things are just going to cancel so nicely and leaves you with 75 out of 250. That is. 30%. So we even got a different answer. So the math looks a little bit different within the problem, but we get a different answer as well. Um, now, I misspoke earlier, now it's time for you to try one on your own. Okay, so it looks like we've got three questions. I want you to pause the video and do your best to answer these. Now, I hope you didn't overthink this first one. This first one's actually a throwback to previous lessons on probability, but the probability um, we'll say P of A, we'll call it event A. It says if you choose a degree at random, what's the probability that the person you choose is a woman? So here, we're looking, we're just gonna go back to looking at number of successes over total outcomes. Because note, everyone in our table has a degree. That's not really a condition. This is not really conditional probability. So we'll get number of successes out of total number of outcomes. And our number of successes here is 1119 because that's the number of women and our total outcomes is 1944 because that's the total number of people. That means we just basically have a roughly a 58% chance of picking a woman if or a female if we're just picking someone at random out of this table. Now the next one says what's the probability that you randomly select a woman given that the person received a professional degree? So there's your professional degree right there. So let's um kind of use our formula, what's the B given A, and I'm just gonna write it out, that would mean the probability of A and B divided by the probability of A. And so here, we're gonna look at the probability that they have a professional degree and are female, divided by the probability that they have a, that the person we're choosing has a professional degree. This is like our event A, okay? It's given that the person received a professional degree. That's our condition. That's what goes down here in the denominator, okay? So I can see how it'd be easy to get those confused. So let's look at our table. What's, what's the probability of someone being a female with a professional degree? Well, there's 39 females with professional degrees out of 1944 total people. So 39 over 1944, if that was its own problem, you know, what's the probability of randomly selecting a female with a professional degree? We'd be done. That would be it. But then we got to look at our denominator, which says the probability of a someone having a professional degree. Well, the number of professional degrees is 83, and the total number of outcomes is 1944. So that would be your denominator. Your, your chance of randomly selecting someone with a professional degree is 83 out of 1944. And so um, I'm going to kind of skip the math on this one. If we were to Flip the second and multiply, your 1944s would cancel and you'd have 39 out of 83. Once again, you might have been able to identify that from the table. There's 39 professional degrees out of 83 total um, for females, or uh, excuse me, 39 females with out of 83 total with professional degrees. Um, but that's equal to roughly 47%. And then here's our very last problem. It says, what's the probability that a randomly selected person has a doctorate given that the person's male. So I'm going to write out my formulas again. And so it's important to define here what event A and event B are. Okay, so what, basically what's our condition? Okay, given that the person was male, that's our condition. That's, that's what's going to go down here. That's like our event A. Okay, so we're finding the probability that they're male and doctors over the probability of them being male. So if, as we look at that, let's look at our male doctors. It looks like there are 25 male doctors out of 1944 total people. 
And then we're just to divide that out of the probability that a randomly selected person is male. And if you look at the male people, it looks like there's 825 out of 1924, or out of 1944. 825 over 1944. If you divide your fractions by uh, multiplying by the reciprocal, you would get 25 over 825, which is roughly 3%. So if there was one thing I could do as we kind of close this video, if there's one thing I can encourage you to do, it'd be to write out these formulas and write out what event B is and what event A is. Remember that event A is your condition, your given, given that the person received a professional degree. That's your event A. Given that the person is a woman, that's your event A. Um, I guess it didn't really apply to that one. But uh, given that the person was male, that is event A. Um, so yeah.